The Battle of Chomdo occurred from 6 to the 19th of October 1950. It was a military campaign by the People's Republic of China to take the Chomdo region from a de facto independent Tibetan state after months of failed negotiations on the status of Tibet. The campaign resulted in the capture of Chomdo and further negotiations between the PRC and Tibetan representatives that eventually resulted in the annexation of Tibet by the People's Republic of China. Chapter 1 Background Kham was the historical borderland between culturally Chinese and Tibetan areas and had been fought over by neighboring authorities. Prior to the establishment of the PRC, it roughly coincided with the Sikang province under Kuomintang-led Republic of China, but its western half, known as Chomdo, was occupied and controlled by Tibetan authorities from Lhasa since the 1930s. The Kompa Tibetans who lived there were fiercely independent, and they and Lhasa Tibetans held each other in mutual contempt and dislike, with the Kampas in some cases hating Lhasa rule even more than Chinese rule, which was why the Kampas did little to resist Chinese forces as they entered eastern Kham and subsequently took over the whole of Tibet. Likewise, the Qinghai Tibetans view the Tibetans of central Tibet as distinct and different from themselves, and even take pride in the fact that they were not ruled by Lhasa ever since the collapse of the Tibetan Empire. Kampas like the Pandatsang clan, had led rebellions for autonomy from Lhasa. Because of this, the Chinese communists viewed them as potential revolutionary allies. In January 1950, the communists officially proposed to aid the Pandatsang brothers' cause in exchange for them to stay on the sidelines during the liberation of Tibet, but the Pandatsang brothers decided instead to send George Patterson to India to seek alternate aid. Pandatsang Rupa, leader of the pro Kuomintang Tibet Improvement Party, also offered the Lhasa appointed governor of Chomdo, Mgyabo Nahuang Jigme, some Kompa fighters in exchange for the Tibetan government recognizing the local independence of Kham. Garbo refused the offer. Chapter 2 Negotiations with Lhasa On 7 March 1950, a Tibetan government delegation arrived in Kolompong to open a dialogue with the newly declared People's Republic of China, and aimed to secure assurances that it would respect Tibet's territorial integrity, among other things. The dialogue was delayed by a debate between the Tibetan, Indian, Britain and the PRC delegation over the location of the talks. The Tibetan delegation eventually met with the PRC's Ambassador General Yuan Zhongxian in Delhi on 16 September 1950. Yuan communicated a three-point claimed proposal that Tibet be regarded as part of China, that China be responsible for Tibet's defense, and that China was responsible for Tibet's trade and foreign relations. Refusal would result in conquest by China. The Tibetans undertook to maintain the relationship between China and Tibet as one of preceptor and patron, and their head delegate, Sepan W. D. Shekapa, on 19 September, recommended cooperation. Chinese troops need not be stationed in Tibet, it was argued, since it was under no threat, and if attacked by India or Nepal could appeal to China for military assistance. Chapter 3 – Invasion of Eastern Kham after the defeat of major Kuomintang forces in the Chinese Civil War, the People's Liberation Army turned its attention to the Republic of China territories in the hinterland. Eastern Kham was the Chinese-held part of Sikang and the gateway to Tibetan areas. The 18th Army of the PLA formed the leading detachment advancing toward Tibet with the 52nd Division as its main force, and arrived at Yan on 12 February 1950. In March, the People's Liberation Army arrived in Kanging. By mid-April, the 18th Army had at least 30,000 passing through Kanging, and 10,000 Tibetans helped to build the road from Kanging to Gaz, which was completed in August. The 18th Army of the PLA assembled at Gaz on 30 July, headquartered at Zunlong, and entered Litang from the east. The Qinghai Cavalry Detachment entered Jaigu on the 22nd of July, forming a north-south pincer on Chomdo. In June 1950, the PLA and the Tibetan Army fought for the first time in Denk. Denk is located beside the main road from Gaz to Yushu, about 100 miles northeast of Chomdo. Former Chomdo Governor Lalo Zhuang Dorje had set up a radio station there. 
The People's Liberation Army traced the source of the radio signals and launched a raid across the Jinsha River and destroyed the radio station. Two weeks later, 800 Kompa militia raided Denk, and killed 600 PLA soldiers. In the end, the PLA succeeded in occupying Eastern Kham. Chapter 4, Battle of Chomdo After months of failed negotiations, attempts by Lhasa to secure foreign support and assistance, and the troop build-ups by the PRC in Tibet, the PLA crossed the Jinsha River on 6 or 7 October 1950 into Lhasa-controlled Chomdo, crossing the de facto border at five places. Two PLA units quickly captured the border town of Chomdo by 19 October, by which time 114 PLA soldiers and 180 Tibetan soldiers had been killed or wounded. The Chomdo governor and commander of Tibetan forces, Ngabo Nawang Jigme, surrendered with his 2,700. Writing in 1962, Jiang Gowa claimed 5,738 enemy troops liquidated and over 5,700 destroyed, and more than 3,000 peacefully surrendered. Active hostilities were limited to a border area controlled by Lhasa northeast of the Salween River and east of the 96th Meridian. According to the Dalai Lama, the PLA did not attack civilians. With the capture of Chomdo, the PLA believed the objective to have been reached, unilaterally ceased hostilities, and sent Ngabo to Lhasa to reiterate terms of negotiation, and waited for Tibetan representatives to respond through delegates to Beijing. On 21 October, Lhasa instructed its delegation to leave immediately for Beijing for consultations with the PRC government, and to accept the first provision if the status of the Dalai Lama could be guaranteed, while rejecting the other two conditions. It later rescinded even acceptance of the first demand, after a divination before the six armed Mahakala deities indicated that the three points could not be accepted, since Tibet would fall under foreign domination. On 24 October, all military operations ended. Chapter 5 Aftermath After news of the defeat at the Battle of Kamno reached Lhasa, Regent Nahuang Sunbrab Thutob stepped down, and the 14th Dalai Lama was enthroned ahead of plans. In February 1951, five plenipotentiaries from Tibet were sent to Beijing to negotiate with the PRC government, led by Chief Representative Ngabo. In late April 1951, the Tibetan Kashag delegation went to Beijing to conclude peace talks, again led by Ngabo, who would go on to serve in the high ranks of the PLA and PRC government. The 17-point agreement was eventually signed between the Chinese and the Tibetans. After releasing the captured, Chinese broadcasts promised that if Tibet was peacefully liberated, the Tibetan elites would not be denied their positions and power. Some Kompa fighters continued their opposition. Local warlords later became united under a common objective and hence resulted in the formation of Chushi Gangdruk with assistance from the CIA. According to contemporary author Melvin Goldstein, the campaign aimed not to invade Tibet per se but to capture the Lhasa army occupying Chomdo, demoralize the Lhasa government, and to exert pressure to get Tibetan representatives who agree to negotiations in Beijing and sign terms recognizing China's sovereignty over Tibet. Chapter 5 Section 1 Sources <laughs>